Welcome to my advertising tutorial. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. In this conversation, we're gonna go through a real world setup of every single advertising type available on Amazon. So this is interesting because there's so many different new techniques that have come out even in the last couple of weeks. There's also a lot of things that have been out for some time that are under tapped. So whenever you're trying to figure out where to put your dollars in advertising, you need to diversify your portfolio, flush it out, make sure every section is segmented correctly, filled in so you can go gather as much traffic as possible. So let's dive in. This conversation is going to be both for beginners and advanced. I'm gonna be peppering in advanced techniques as we go through, but on the basic level first, there are three campaign types, sponsored products, brands, and display. Um, it really is more like 15 types. Inside of each of these sections, there are so many different types of ways to target and segment that I think it really is way more than the three you see on screen. So we're gonna go into each one of these sections and diagnose like what you can and can't do in each of the segmentation types. But in short, sponsored products are your generic things that show up right there. Sponsored brands are the headline ads up there. There's also gonna be videos and a bunch of other things in, at that section. And sponsored display shows a banner in various locations within search as well as the product detail pages. So let's, let's go into each of these sections one at a time and talk about them. So with sponsored products, when you're creating things, you have an option to create portfolios, which could segment your portfolio of products. So the larger your product portfolio is, the more likely you need to use that segmenta segmentation type. To be clear, this isn't going to help you um, gain more traffic if you use it but it will help you segment your campaigns to easily understand where the money is going for easy rollups and organization of your data. Um, so as you scroll through here, a start date is very rarely used unless you have like a seasonal campaign. So if you are trying to do something for Mother's Day or maybe Black Friday or Prime Day and you just want a very specific campaign on specific keywords during a time frame, that's the only time I would be using this. Otherwise, for the most part, you want to build a campaign and run it in perpetuity and never turn it off unless it's ACOS is out of control. Daily budget, uh, depending on the size of your, your, your amount of spend that you have available, you might start out with $20 a day. Or if you have a larger you know, amount of ad spend, maybe you're spending $500 a day. Really big variation of what you're expecting to do. But when in doubt, you want to spend 10 to 11% tacos, that is total ad spend of your gross sales. So if you want to make $100,000 in gross sales a month, you should spend 11%. So set your daily budgets accordingly. If you're spending more like 5% tacos right now, you're under spending, you're leaving sales on the table. Now, that generic 11% target that I gave can be different in each category. You know, uh, outdoor category, for example, you can get away with a lower tacos, might be able to get away with six or 7%. But if you're in supplements, good luck trying to do 11%, you're gonna be more like 15 or 20. Um, <clears throat> on targeting, automatic and manual targeting have various changes to what you're gonna see below, right? What's interesting is that Amazon automatically does up and down for automatic and they switch it to down only for manual. Um, in general, I recommend starting new campaigns or new products with fixed bids though. And that's because Amazon system is not smart enough to know what's going to work for your product on the first get go. Um, and so generally speaking, a manual targeting method for fixed bids is going to get you the impressions you need to get the item off the ground. There's what's called a honeymoon period in the first 14 days. So spending a larger amount of, of ads in the first month or two makes a lot of sense. Tacos target for month one on a product launch, usually 30%, 20% month two, and try and work it down to that 11% target by end of month three. So with that in mind, we're gonna start with the automatic targeting. The most important thing people do with automatic targeting is to ad negations. This is the fastest campaign type to set up. And you can see you have the ability uh, to switch between down only up and down and fixed. I recommend starting with fixed. 
I don't generally use the bid placements very much. I don't have a lot of success with them. Um, when they first came out, they kind of mattered a lot more because people were underutilizing um, bidding on search pages. But today, because there's just just really no room left on the search engine page, uh, it's too expensive. <clears throat> so there's there's pretty much price parity for what you get um, out of what you're, you're you're spending between the two between on being on a detail page versus in in search. Just because of that, notice here how it says top of search as well. So if if you were uh, trying to be on the search page versus the detail page, the only way to control that is to be on top which means you're gonna spend an even more exorbitant amount of money. But if you're gonna test this out, I would test it from 10, 15, 20%, some, somewhere along that line. Um, I've never once bid it up higher on product pages, but you could do that as well. Um, <clears throat> I always recommend you name your campaigns in a very careful manner. So for example, you wanna put something like SKU, ASIN, could do one or the other, doesn't, doesn't need to be both, product title, right? And then targeting method, right? So if you're going to make this an auto campaign, this could be, you know, Age of Sage, Mother's Day Kit, auto, right? And then as we scroll down, I would go ahead and use the same name for the ad group. There might be some exceptions to that where you have multiple ad groups in a campaign, but that's really not a best practice anymore. That's because uh, Amazon's changed their algorithm quite a bit. And so if you funnel multiple products into the same campaign, it's going to optimize to whichever one it thinks will convert the best. And that's not always necessarily what you're trying to accomplish or do. So with that in mind, um, let's scroll down here. We're going to type in the age of Sage product. So I've got uh, a Mother's Day kit and a wine tumbler set. So we'll add in this. You'll notice how I have two SKUs here. One of them has a hyphen FBM for fulfilled by merchant. Uh, I, I only do this because I have a seasonal product with high probabilities of stockouts because Amazon's restock limits are a pain in the rear end. And, and so because of that, we have a double SKU. Advertising is done at the SKU level, not the ASIN level. So if you create a new SKU in the future, you will have to come back and recreate all of your campaigns or simply add this product to those old campaigns. Common misconception on that, people think ads are done at the ASIN level, they're actually done at the SKU level. So if you wanted to advertise only an FBA product or only an FBM product, you do have the ability to do that while having duplicate SKUs on the same ASIN. By the way, this is a best practice, white hat tactic, use it all the time. Automatic targeting, so you choose how much you pay for clicks um, and you could set a suggested bid anywhere. So with a product that's in the beauty category, they're trying to get me to bid quite a bit higher than many other products might. Um, but 75 cents in home and goods might be able to get away with that. Gifting might be able to get away with that. But in beauty, definitely can't get away with that. You'd have to be bidding in that $3 range most likely. You could also set bids by a targeting group. Uh, so if you wanted to turn off some of these types, so click... A lot of people um, mostly have success with close match, but sometimes replacements or substitutes, as they're called here, also do quite well. But complements is not something that I would generally use unless you've got like, a, I don't know, um, a product that would be used with other products. So maybe you have an accessory or something like that. That's when compliments might do pretty well. The nice thing about the automatic targeting is you don't have to do any particular setups yourself. So you don't have to go in and say, hey, I want to target these 15 pages. So why would that matter? Well, it matters because if I am creating a campaign today for auto, any product that's added from here until the end of time could theoretically be targeted by my campaign. So if I have competitors coming out with new products and I miss it, the auto campaign would at least allow me to be competitive and target them. A lot of people advocate for creating an auto campaign and then turning it off and then building a manual. And I think that's a mistake. I think you need to keep auto campaigns on 24 seven. Now, a lot of people are like, but I can get better results on my manual. Well, why is that? It's because you are tailor focusing specific exact match keywords and they might be your best keywords. But at the end of the day, the auto is going to fluctuate with the trends. So if there's a new type of vernacular that's used, maybe there's a new show that comes out 
and all of a sudden there's a phrase that converts really well for your product. You don't even have to have um, a seasonal type product or or a genre product like this beer glass I have in front of me here with this is the way, right? So Star Wars doesn't come out until I think at least next year. Um, and so, uh, you know, some nobody's going to be searching this is the way in bulk, but there's going to be a few fan favorites out there who are going to do it. But if something like the keyword Star Wars gift wasn't in my manual campaign and all of a sudden it's going like through the roof because there's a new Star Wars movie, maybe, maybe it's not the Mandalorian like the beer glass, but maybe uh, the auto campaign picks up on the trend and gets me access to that traffic. So there's just a lot of reasons why you'd want to have an auto campaign. What we'll talk about today too is how the negatives are really important to manage an auto campaign. Uh, for example, there are various keywords that I know for a fact are never going to do well for some of my products. So in the case of my Age of Sage product, uh, I know that the term bonus mom will never work, right? So if we go to my listing here, well, apparently didn't even trigger it on that one. Let's try that again. Mother's Day. Uh, here we go. So with this particular product, I know that the term bonus mom doesn't do well. But other terms related to being a mom do quite well, right? So uh, birthing gifts and other various vernaculars do quite well because, you know, hey, it's a new product to make a mom feel good, right? It comes with a variety of different items that we're expressing here. I'm trying to showcase uh, pregnancy and other moms and holding babies and stuff like that, right? So there's just a lot of things you can do. One of the other things I'd point out here is I launched this product in Mother's Day for 2021. Three weeks before Mother's Day, I had a single product review, and that was it when I started to spend a ton of advertising. I spent $11,000 on ads, and I generated $135,000 in sales in less than three weeks. So one of the things a lot of people are advocating is like, you need reviews before you spend on ads, and, and you really don't. You just have to spend a lot on ads and you got to really tailor focus and have everything on the listing premiere, right? Full title setup, all the photos, a video, all the bullet points, everything from top to finish, all the way down, A plus content. If you have all of these things in place when you first launch out, it's okay for your advertising um, to not have reviews because somebody that's looking at the listing will still think highly of what work you have put in to optimize it. Um, and it won't convert as well as a listing with 20 reviews on it if you have zero or one. But having a single product review will double your conversion rate. So get that one review in. But after that, it's diminishing returns the higher up you go. It really is. So I don't think it's critical to have those reviews in place. All right. So negative keywords, extremely important. Let's actually go through one of my auto campaigns so you can kind of see what I've negated in the past. Um, so let's just sort you know, this is last 65 days. Um, one of the, one of the silly things about Amazon is they don't save data past 65 days, which makes it a little complicated, right? So we were looking at the Age of Sage products. So let's go into the Age of Sage um, campaign here. And the ACOS is out of control. It's at, you know, 195% on this particular campaign. So let's go see what's going on with this right now. Obviously, this is an ACOS that we wouldn't normally want operating. Um, so we, there's definitely something wrong on this particular campaign. So if we go over to the search terms and we figure out like what's going on, where the problem is, and we sort it by spam, you can see that the term gifts for a woman, nine clicks, not doing so hot. So when you go through the search terms like this, we could type in for women just to see if there's a trend line. Like I wouldn't negate that term without seeing other available terms adding up to at least $20. So I'm not really quite at my threshold there. Um, so let's just type in gifts for and see what happens with that and nothing else. So I'm not really ready to negate that because, you know, maybe the next search, maybe the next person that searches this will um, make a purchase. So wine gift box, though, that particular term probably will never do well for me, even though I'm selling a wine tumbler. Somebody who's searching that is probably looking for an actual wine item or a box to put a wine item in. And so I'm not competitive with this. Therefore, we're going to come in here and we're going to add this as a negation. Sometimes when I'm in here, I can see the new beta program where they allow you to negate the item straight in the campaign. I'm not seeing that trigger today for whatever reason, but it's kind of nice. So we're going to add in here, we're going to do uh, an exact match on that one. Um, if you wanted to do a, a phrase, be very careful. 
uh, because any iteration of that phrase will negate it as entirely. Um, so I've also previously negated some ASINs and the term gift box. Um, so this exact match will prevent it from showing up for gift box, but I also negated wine gift box because of the results that we were getting. Right, so we can go look at the targeting too, and you can kind of see like I, I do really well with various types of um, targeting, but here you can see loose match not doing hot at all, um, and we're trying to see if we can recover anything on close match. Notice the bid's really, really small. Before we trash this campaign, we're just putting in a really small bid to see if there's anything of value to recover here. So far, not so great, right? Like this campaign's not doing well. So that could be because it's just too global, it's hitting too much, right? But I have many campaigns that are auto campaigns on various different types of products that do really well. Also, this auto campaign will do really well during Mother's Day and Christmas, but during the rest of the year, maybe not so hot. Despite my efforts to try and make this item less about Mother's Day, it's not necessarily generic quite enough to be sold year round. Now, it still does well, it's still profitable, and it meets the you know sort of things I'm looking for to keep it up year round, but it's not something I can keep up year round and spend lots of ads on. All right, so if we look at another auto campaign, here's a, a virtual wine glass. So you can see the product here, we'll, di we'll dive in a little bit deeper so you can see what product we're selling. Um, and you can see, uh, I actually might be out of stock on this one. It says ineligible for advertising. So whenever something like that happens, you can always go over to your Seller Central account. And sure enough, I'm out of stock on that one. Those dang uh, restock limitations in the supply chains are wreck. So won't be able to do a whole lot with that one, particularly uh, while we're shooting this video. But nonetheless, still pretty high ACOS. So if we go to the search terms, we can see, you know, is there anything in here that's not doing well for a variety of different reasons? Sort it by spend and teacher gifts for whatever reason, not doing hot. So we're going to look at teacher gifts and gifts for teachers as potential negations and save some uh, some spend. But as we scroll through here and we look at the order amounts, most of the phrases are actually doing quite poorly. Uh, this is an this is actually a case where the campaign itself probably needs to be entirely paused. And that's because it's at 61% ACOS. I'm also out of stock. And if we get like one single product return, we wouldn't want ads on to sell a single unit. Um, so we're going to pause that one entirely. As we scroll down and look at some of the other auto campaigns, um, we see a lot of high ACOS things that we're trying to do. So we try to search up for 50%, turn that one off. Uh, again, running very, very high ACOS right now. I'm out of season for some of my products. This is normal for my category. Coming back to the campaign creation types. So we're going to, that's pretty much auto. There's really not much more to talk about with auto. You just need to make sure you keep the negations up to, to keep your ACOS under check. We're next going to go to manual. This is, um, again, I still start things out at fixed bids um, and scroll down. We've already added the product here. There are two options in the targeting methodology. There's keyword targeting. And in here, it gives you some very specific um, keywords that it thinks will do well. And you can decide if you want to do broad phrase or exact match. So generally speaking, um, broad match is underrated um, and don't hesitate to use it. Sometimes you can get a lower A cost by using a broad match. So if you want to test this, you could create one campaign with a broad match, one with an exact, and see what does better. Um, but you got to you got to A/B test that to know for sure. So we're going to create one for mom care packages, and I'm just going to just simply add one single keyword to this particular campaign. And this is one I'm going to actually launch. I'm going to take the keyword here. I'm going to throw it all the way up in um, to the title of the campaign. And I'm going to throw it into my Age of Sage portfolio here and manual targeting, fixed bids, a little bit higher on the top of search, and put the ad group as the same. This is a very simple way to do a specific keyword. You could throw in five or six keywords into a campaign, but we're, we're finding that keyword isolation with keywords, just one keyword per campaign, sometimes outperform. This is all over the place. The data is not supportive of a, of a one size fits all. So you do need to test this, but on occasion uh, for certain categories, certain products, certain keywords, we are finding keyword isolation does quite well. So this is on the more advanced side. If you were going to just simply just add a bunch of these keywords, hesitate from adding 50 plus keywords that no longer works. You're going to see two or three of your keywords get the impressions. The rest won't. So you're better off creating 50 campaigns for 50 keywords 
which is a lot of work, unfortunately, but it is the right methodology today. Um, I would try and keep your cap around five to 10 keywords max on a particular campaign, unless you have other campaigns that have the keyword isolations done. It's okay to have one generic campaign and other ones have keywords isolated. A lot of people think that you're going to compete with yourself by having the same keywords on multiple campaigns. That's simply false. That does not exist. As you scroll down, um, negative keywords are not necessary if you're doing an exact match, sometimes necessary on phrase and absolutely necessary on broad, right? So there could be words in here that I might want to negate, but I don't know when I first launch it, so I'm not going to fill it out today. So we're going to launch that campaign and simply target that one keyword with a daily budget that's high to see what happens. So that's, that's keyword targeting. So we're going to go back to the campaigns. We're going to create a new campaign and we're going to try and target sponsor products again. But this time we're going to select, um, when we scroll down to the targeting methodology, we're going to select product targeting, right? So we're going to grab the age of sage kits again and add both SKUs. And this time we're going to look at product targeting. So when you first select product targeting, this is going to target products on the detail page. That's where this shows up on the detail page right here. So four stars and above, you can see that right there. This will be targeted on other product pages if done correctly. So if we go back into the product targeting here, I could select bath and shower sets. I could also search for other categories. So if we type in mom, for example, to see what comes up, not a lot of good things. We type mother motherhood comes up that might be okay or if we say gift you can see other things not a lot of great categories but if you drill in you might find something good here um, to see you know what happens you could also target individual products so if you know there's 10 competitors that you think your product is superior to then targeting those products makes a lot of sense so if you think hey gift box for mothers by silly obsessions i hit target there how am I going to do? Now they have 1,100 reviews on their item. So they have a huge amount of ground that they're defending that's pretty hard to beat. Even though I have 100 five star reviews, you're going to have to be careful when you target something like this. That could be a waste of money, right? Now, as you scroll through, you can be selective on what you're going to target and what you think is going to work. Um, would, you would you target a $15 item with a $50 item? Probably not because somebody that clicked on the $15 item to begin with is looking for a gift under $20, right? So you gotta be selective of what you're gonna target. Category targeting typically is superior to the product individual targeting method. It's also more time effective and scalable and permanent, but it does make sense. The more sophisticated you get, the more deeper you should go to do individual product targeting. With, uh, with that in mind, you can see there's oh, uh, a different bid suggested per product. You'll get a pretty good idea of which ones are doing well. You can also exclude um, what to target. So if you don't want to target yourself, you can exclude your brands from it. You could also exclude specific products. So let's say you did a category targeting, but you're like, oh my gosh, I'm beaten, getting killed by that one brand out there. You could exclude their product from your campaign as well. It's almost like a negative target, but it's called an exclusion. This is fairly new. Um, so this didn't exist before. So it's an advanced strategy that it prevents your ads from displaying in specific search results or detail pages to lower your bid for some specific brands instead of excluding is another way you could do that. Um, so, so I highly recommend you check that out. That is everything about sponsored products. So next we're going to go back and we're going to abandon this campaign and we're going to go into sponsored brands. So inside of sponsored brands, they have three ad formats. The most important one is video. If you don't have videos created today, grab your cell phone out of your pocket, pause the video, and go shoot a 30 second video of your product. Show me the product in use, give me the banana for scale, and go get a video taken. It's extremely important, right? So I used to be a television reporter. Um, I've, I, I own my Amazon guy as an agency, and we got 80 employees, 160 accounts, and it blows my mind how many people have not invested in video yet. Video format is the fastest growing advertising methodology on Amazon, not even just on Amazon, but anywhere. Amazon recently just launched the ability to target products from the detail page with a video. Keep that in mind that they're expanding video use. You can see it in search results. You can see it on product detail pages. A lot, a lot of options. So when you take your cell phone out, 
go shoot a 30 second clip. You can pay some dude on Fiverr to throw a music track on it and edit it and do a, do some shots. But keep in mind, you want to have shots where you got a close up of the item like this, right? You also want to have a medium shot, which is this. And then you also want to have a far away shot like this, right? Three different types of shots to take when you're doing your video ad. So you can show the product banana for scale. Also show me the target demographic. Really important that you show me who is this product for. If you don't show me who this product is for, then I don't know if it's for me. If you try and cast a wide tent and try and put everybody and their dogs in that one product targeting, it's for kids, it's for men, it's for women, it's for old people, it's for young people, whatever it might be, you're going to have terrible results. As a marketer, you are a marketer by watching this video today. As a marketer, it is your job to profile people. So who is the target demographic you're going for? Shoot a video for that, have them on camera, get it taken care of. If you can't get the target demographic, you don't have a high production video set up, at least shoot a 30 second video with your phone with a 10 megapixel camera, you'll be just fine. All right, so let's start on video since I just harped on that one quite a bit. You can see various options here. I'm gonna select my, my SKU. There are very specific video specs. So again, shoot it with your cell phone, copy and paste these video specs, go order it from some Fiverr guy to do some editing and tell them this is the spec you need. They'll take care of all the formatting. Here's how a video ad could look. It'll show up on the detail page. One of my favorite uh, video ads I've ever seen was posted on LinkedIn by Brett. And here you can see just a simple dog animation wagging the tail. Does that stop you in your tracks when you're, when you're trying to find a product on Amazon? Absolutely. Make sure you have video ads created and notice how they loop it and they have the dog come back just in case they catch you the second time. And very, very basic video ad to get created. Highly, highly impactful. Video ad targeting is very similar to sponsored products. You can select keywords and select from the list down here. You can also do product targeting, category targeting, individual product targeting. All of those same things apply here. You can also negate just like on the other campaign setup. So I'm not going to be spending time rehashing those. I think I've hit my hammer on this one. You need to have video ads. Very, very crucial. One other thing I'll mention. So you can see here's a detail page. Video ads are now showing up right in line with the product. And I'm not talking about this video section here. They're showing up higher in the fold. Um, so if we want to try and trigger, so let's just type in social distancing wine glass. By the way, for those that follow me on YouTube, um, I have been banned from advertising with my social distancing wine glass, even though these guys have their ad up. Yeah, sucks. But for whatever reason, I've been, and this is the product right there. It used to be ranked number one organic for the term wine glass. But unfortunately, I've lost that, that opportunity since, since uh, ads are banned. But for whatever reason, I've been able to still keep my video ad up. And that's the only thing that's kept my product life force available. And you can see here how it would look as you scroll down and see a particular video ad. And again, this is just still shots with us just showing the product on a table and makes it very, very um, usable. So video ads can be very, very basic, just like that. All right, so let's go over to Store Spotlight. Hardly anybody uses this one. This is a um, not necessarily a good one. You could set up um, for either of your, your stores. So let's just type in Mother Momster here. And error loading creative. Okay, all right, so you can load a logo um, and you can put in your headline. You can put in uh, the particular product in slot one, two, and three. You can select which items are going to go there. Um, and you have to have a unique product in each of these three slots. So you would change the image, switch which product's showing up. And this is going to highlight um, the store. So what that could look like is just like this. So the, the third slot's not populating, maybe because the third product's out of stock on this particularly previously created ad. But you can shop Momster. You can go through the store ad and see everything that's available in the store. So this will this will eventually link over to Amazon.com slash Momster. And you can see various different things. By the way, look how you can see that follow button that allows you to follow somebody's content, their, their social posts, which is a very valuable thing to do. While you're on a brand store, you can see all kinds of different products, what's available, what's in stock. You can link to different things, a lot of different options that are available to you. You can go to um, subcategories, just like a website. 
So you can land, when you're doing a store ad like this, you can land on any one of those pages. You can talk about the products. Uh, getting through quarantine wine glasses is how I phrase that particular one. That was the headline. Um, and you can put in a logo. I just put the letter M for Momster. Um, very, very basic square logo. Same types of targeting is available. You can talk, you can target category, individual product, just like you could before. The only difference here is that this is going to show up at the top of the search result page. So that is uh, store spotlight. We'll go into sponsored brands and go to product collection next. This is more commonly used, um, but so in order of my preference, do video ads, product collection, and then store spotlight in that order. So see how it prospectively would look different here where you can see like you're focused way more on the products and less on the store. Um, stores just simply don't convert as well as detail pages. And that's why you should be pushing your traffic to the product collection instead. All right. So, um, same concept here. You can put your products in one, two, and three again, edit your logo, add a, add a title, and you can see a preview of what that's going to look like. So if we go through here, we should be able to see some brand ads or brand headlines. So let's just go into this one. Running a 10% ACoS on this particular campaign is doing quite well. So you can see I'm doing well with wine glass stemless, which is kind of a really strange word to do well for with this particular campaign. I'm going to bump up my bid because of that. Um, but then you got something like Stella Rose Wine. That doesn't make sense. I'm going to pause that. Um, and we can kind of scroll down and see what else is going on. So some of these keywords don't make sense, but you got to test them out sometimes to see what happens. All right, so let's go over to the creative on this headline ad getting through quarantine wine glasses. And you can see the, the big image right there with the two different products. Here's version one, here's version two. You can look at to see like what the, you know, what this will look like on a desktop. So it doesn't look as good on a desktop, does it? But when you look at the mobile ad, it looks quite a bit better. So if you're not happy with how it looks on a desktop, you can float through and see the other creative types like that. All right, so that is the sponsored um, products um, collection through through uh, sponsored brands. Let's next go to display. I think this is probably the most underutilized campaign type, and that's because a lot of people aren't as familiar with it. This became available in Seller Central in the last 18 months. It used to be Vendor Central or AMS only before they migrated everything together. Um, one of the really cool things about display, you can do the same types of targeting, product targeting, but here is one unique thing and that's audience targeting. Inside of here, most accounts, I think they're out of beta at this point, so everybody should be able to have access to this. Um, you got views remarketing, so you can retarget people who've already been to your detail page. You can target searches, shoppers who searched for keywords relevant to the advertised products. This is gonna pull people off of Amazon to Amazon to look at your product. You can also target purchasers, somebody who previously purchased your own item. So, you know, maybe you want to target people who bought your item during the Christmas rush last year. Purchasers targeting would be very smart to run at that point. So with views remarketing though, as you scroll down here, the most important thing to showcase, and we'll just pick a random product. I'm out of stock on that one. We'll do, we'll do the Mr. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, wine tumblers here. So you can optimize with some new methods. These are brand new. So you could optimize for page visits or for conversions. So display is higher in the marketing funnel. And the reason they call it a funnel is because it's like kind of like a tornado, right? So with a tornado, the higher in the tornado you are, you aren't necessarily sucked into the very bottom and you might float out of the tornado the higher up you are. Just like a customer, they're looking at your detail page. They're high in the funnel because they're just generally becoming aware of your brand. Maybe in the middle, they're comparing your product against two other competitors. And then finally, they're making a decision as they get to the bottom of the tornado funnel. So with that in mind, um, somebody who's going for page visits is going to be a much larger brand. Somebody with, you know, probably eight figure brands are going to be targeting, optimizing for page visits. Most of us are going to be going for conversions because we need dollar in, dollar out type mentality. And as you scroll down, you can also access audiences views remarketing this is a brand new section that really deserves some more attention now most of my testing with this has not done well 
in my category, but I'm confident in many other categories that will do well. Um, I spent about $1,500, $2,000 back in May targeting various categories with this new methodology. It was brand new back in May, and I, I had two sales. So $100 in sales for $2,000 in spend, very terrible results. Um, so just be very cautious with this particular one uh, because it's so high in the funnel or Amazon's tracking on this really sucks. Could be a combination of both. Maybe I got more sales, I just don't know it because it didn't come back to this particular spend. So it's very high in the funnel. These are people that are not on Amazon, clicking on ads, et cetera. But what's really cool though, is you can target various different categories, right? So I could target tumblers, I could target mug sets, wine glasses, you name it, various different types of things that could be targeted. You can also search for different categories. Right. So if I wanted to, to find somebody, you know, let's just type in wedding. Right. So if I want to target people who are interested in wedding with my Mr. And Mrs. product, there could be a very, very big opportunity with that in mind. Um, and, and there's just a lot of different options that are coming out. So you can sort by lifestyle, interest, life events. So let's look at life events here. So if you got a product for, you know, let's say you sell brown boxes, recent movers. Yeah, that might be semi-decent or new parent. My age of sage Mother's Day kit might do pretty well for them. Spoiler alert, didn't do well, but tried it. <laughs> got to always test it. New pet owner getting married. So this one would be a very good one for me to target. So I'm going to target um, getting married and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to target. And there's 5 million people a month that are eligible to see this. And so we're going to come in here and target, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Wine Tumblers, Couples Gifts for Weddings. And we're going to go up to the top here. We're going to type in uh, Sage Wine Tumblers Getting Married Lifestyle. So this is one I haven't tested yet. So we're going to test this with a $25 in spend. Going to make the campaign name the same for the ad group name. Going to target audiences. Views your marketing and Amazon audience. I'm going to select my Mr. and Mrs. Wine Tumbler. Going to optimize for conversions. Um, probably going to put my bid at a dollar eleven, and I'm going to select only one audience: getting married. That's the audience I want to target here for Mr. and Mrs. Tumbler. Now, better audience than this would be people who have somebody in their family getting married to buy them a gift. But we got to test it out, see what happens. So I'm going to hit launch campaign. You can see the different creative campaigns. Um, I did not spend time creating the custom image, which also could have been very beneficial. All right, so to recap some of the things we covered today, you, you, can, you can target so many different ways that there are way more than three types of ways to target campaigns. You need to segment your ads out a lot and create lots of different campaigns. You need to create auto, manual, uh, category targeting, product targeting, defense and offense and videos are super, super important. So these are the things that we covered today. They're very, 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 very important. Now, if you would like to um, hire my Amazon guy to run your ads, you can talk to our team. Just go over to myamazonguy.com. We're a full service Amazon agency. My team will run ads. Um, they also do everything from SEO, design and catalog management. So a lot of people, your, your detail pages are going offline. You can't edit your your, your products because the merchandising team at Amazon has locked the listing. We handle all of these problems to make those problems go away so you can grow your sales, grow your traffic, and improve your conversion rates. I'm Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, you can go over to youtube.com slash myamazonguy. And then finally, um, we also file trademarks. This is one of the easiest a la carte services. If you don't have A-plus content yet, you don't have your trademark you need to start by getting a trademark and get it under seven days with us at my Amazon guy. We use an attorney. We file this within one business day of you placing an order. You can complete the whole brand registry process in under seven days. That's faster than the IP accelerator, cheaper than the IP accelerator as well. So you can see a bunch of reviews. I have FAQs on everything you need to know about with trademarks. What a great service to offer. We filed more than 425 trademarks and lots and lots of happy customers go check it out. So appreciate you watching uh, our session today. If you have any questions, you can reach out to podcast at myamazonguy.com or leave a comment um, and let us know how we can answer anything concerning ads, SEO, trademarks, catalog management, merchandising, design, and more. 
Thanks for watching.